Merry Christmas, YouTube. It is still a junky 07. I'm out of breath. I haven't used my hair oil lately. This is um, a video series for beginners to makeup. It was a request by Miss Sydney. Hello, girl. Good to see you. I haven't seen you at work lately. Where you been? Yeah, I'm watching you. <laughs> I'm just joking. Um, she is actually my co-worker. Um, and she had asked me on one of my videos to do an eyeshadow for beginners look. And she also asked me questions about foundation, primer, and other stuff. And so I figured I would just do a beginner's series. So this video, and I'm going to just do all the videos tonight and then I'll just upload them like whenever. And I will try to upload them in order. I promise I will try to upload them in order. This one is going to be about primers and foundation. Today I will be using the Stila One Step Primer. It is really expensive unless you get it on sale. I also like Smashbox Photo Finish Light. The regular one breaks me out. I have really sensitive skin. I like the Makeup Forever Primer. Um, what else? The ELF Primer I really like, which is like $3, <laughs> which is cheap. But you only can buy that online. If you want something you can get from um, a drugstore or Walmart, Kmart, then I do highly recommend... Excuse me, the CoverGirl and Olay Simply Ageless Serum Primer. I really like this. I like it as much as this expensive one. Um, but today I will just be using the expensive one. So you, you always want to use a primer before you put on foundation, whether it's a liquid foundation or a powder foundation. And you guys can let, leave your comments below. This is just my opinions and what I find works best for me. A primer will help smooth out your complexion unless you just have like porcelain skin where there's like no bumps, no ridges, no anything. Um, I can feel where I have, um, my skin is oily. Um, <laughs> like little bumps and things like that from where I've had, um, pimples and things. Um, and this one is supposed to correct color, like take out some of the red and, you know, just even out the color. It doesn't do much for me for color. I just like how it feels. Another thing a primer will do besides smooth out your skin is that it will help your foundation to stick to your face. It will, it will give your skin a smooth surface for you to apply your foundation. Um, and in theory, it will help your liquid foundation last longer because you won't be applying as much because you have a smooth canvas already. Sort of like when you're painting a wall in your room. You prime the wall first, right? Because you are prepping the wall for the paint. Makeup primer, foundation primer is to <laughs> prep your face for your foundation. And so I'm going to apply this. And most primers you use with your fingers. And so I'm just going to take it and put it all over my face. If you don't wear foundation, that is fine. You do not have to wear foundation. Um, a lot of people don't wear foundation. Um, some just wear tinted moisturizers and some wear nothing at all. But because I do have um, this coloration in my skin from having acne and from popping, them, popping my pimples, I do have marks and things on my face, which you have seen in person. <laughs> And I do have freckles, but I do like my freckles, so I am not trying to cover up my freckles. Um, I always keep a baby wipe handy to wipe my hands off after I put on my face primer. And also after I put on my eye primer, which again preps your lid for your eyeshadow, I will wipe my fingers off. But that's a whole nother video. So today I'm actually going to use a liquid foundation. I'm not going anywhere. Um, I went to the store earlier just, just to get out the house. I am going to use the Makeup Forever number 170. In the winter I use their shade 153. You will know a foundation matches you if it just kind of blends into your skin tone. It doesn't change your skin tone. It doesn't make you look pasty. It doesn't make you look like you know, you're know you a whole other person. You still look the same. Your skin just looks really evened out. And so I'm going to... Where's my little thingy? Where's my thingy that I put my foundation on? And I know it's somewhere really simple. Right in front of me. I knew it. I knew it. I knew it. <laughs> I just have this little glass candle thing. And I'll just put some foundation on here. And I'll kind of put it in a circle. Um, I don't know if you can see that. Because of the brush that I'm going to use. And this is just the excess that I just kind of 
take off here and put on my chin. I'm going to, you can use any type of foundation brush you feel comfortable with. Um, some brushes I use that I really don't care to use are these flat synthetic ones. These I do like though for getting under my eyes, but for my whole face because I have a big face, it just takes me forever to use a brush this small. Um, also a stippling brush, that's what these kinds are called, or some people call them skunk brushes because it has two-toned fibers. You have black and then you have the white, but since I use it now, and it's even though it's clean, it, it'll never be white again, I don't think. Um, these are good for foundation, also for placing, and it helps blend. And some people will say this will give you an airbrush look. I do have other brushes I use for foundation, but they are not out right now, so I cannot show you. I'm going to use my e.l.f. This is actually their powder brush for blush. And I'm going to just dab it in the foundation and dab it on my face. Another thing about um, foundation, whether it's powder or liquid, is that it may oxidize. And what that means is, is that after you put it on, and as you're either, and you don't even necessarily have to be outside in the sun. As the air gets to it, it'll change the color. It will oxidize. And so sometimes the color you put on, it may not stay that color. So if you're getting matched for foundation in a store, you might want to walk around the mall, you know, for 10 or 15 minutes, or even just sit there for 10 or 15 minutes just to see if that foundation is going to change colors on you. Um, I find for the Makeup Forever shadows, shadows, I'm sorry, the Makeup Forever foundations, they don't change color on me. But that is just something for you to keep in mind for when you go out and start to look for a foundation match. And the same goes for powder foundations. I have, I've had some of them change color on me too. And because I have circles under here, this coloration under my eye, I'll take a little more and pat the foundation under my eye. And also to use up what's left on um, my thing. And you can also put it on the back of your hand, but I prefer not to because it does absorb into my skin like it does on my face. And so I'd rather put it on a surface where I can actually use all of it and it not, you know, disappear into my skin. And wherever you want to put extra, you can put extra. Right now, and I'm just really buffing it in. You want to make sure you get it around your hairline. You want to make sure you get along your jawline. Um, some of us uh, women of color, our face may be lighter than our neck or maybe darker than our neck. Um, I've seen people put foundation, you know, down their neck. I don't do that. I think I'm pretty much the same shade, um, but as I get tan, my face will be a hair more bronzy or hair more red than my neck, but I don't ever go like past here. Um, especially if I'm wearing collared shirts, but I never go past there anyway. But then you always run the risk of getting foundation on your collar or on your coat and things like that, which I think is just really not attractive. And so this is the foundation video. So make sure you get along your hairline as close as you can without turning your hair into your foundation color. <laughs> and make sure you get back here, not on your ear, but just this line right here, your jawline. And another way you can tell when your foundation matches is that you will not be able to see where it starts and where it stops. And I know we've all seen people where, you know, their face is really pretty and then when you look down here, it's like a whole different shade. And so that's why you do want to take it under your chin. Because then if it is slightly off, you can you know, play it off like your face has a tan. <laughs> but yeah, so make sure that you don't have like a clear, distinct line on where your foundation is and where it's not. With um, a liquid foundation, you may or may not want to set it with a powder. Um, the way the Makeup Forever foundation dries, my face is not oily, it's not sticky, it's not anything. Um, but because I do put extra under my eyes, I may get creasing and that's only because I have wrinkles under my eyes. If you don't have any wrinkles under your eyes, it's not going to crease. And sometimes here, I'll get a little creasing. Because as you see, I have these lines right here. And I do tend to smile a lot. And not because everything's funny, but sometimes it's like, you know, are you serious? And so then I'll get like, <laughs> you know, I'll get like a line right here. Um, so a powder foundation, a powder 
will help set the foundation to help decrease um, the creasing and it will also help absorb oil if your face tends to get oily or even if you're not an oily person if it's hot outside and you know you might sweat that day a powder will help absorb that moisture so that your foundation stays like it does right now which is fresh crisp clean everything is all one color and so what I will use today for this video is Revlon color stay and this color is medium deep um, this comes with a sponge I never use it and I've already hit pan so that's why it's that little circle in the middle um, sometimes depending on what foundation I'm wearing I will sometimes put a powder foundation over top of it like this one which is max or if you wanted to you can just put a bronzer over top of it that's a whole nother thing so I'm going to use <laughs> The Revlon Color Stay, and I'm going to use a fluffy powder brush, and I'm just going to dust it all over my face. Now, this powder is not supposed to change your complexion. This is supposed to match me. And so, if you are just setting your foundation, you don't necessarily want a foundation that's going to change what you look like because your foundation has already evened you out. So you just dust it over. I'm going to put extra under my eyes because I put extra foundation there and I don't want to get creasing under there. And so that is that. This is, again, beginner's primer and foundation video per a request that I received. And I will turn the camera off and come back and do a blush bronzer for beginner's tutorial. Thank you guys for watching. You know, vid response if you would like. Uh, feel free to leave um, your comment entries. They are all welcome. If you have any other tips or anything, um, feel free to just leave that down below. And I put this in a French braid earlier and then it came out. Um, <laughs> so thanks guys for watching. I will see you real soon. Bye.